This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome everyone to the CureGen VPR training. Just a couple of housekeeping. If we are recording this training, so if you're not speaking, please mute your phone to eliminate the background noise. And um, we will be, have the recording available on Basecamp along with all the other reference documents. And if you want to ask a question, but you don't want to speak up, you can always use the chat function. So introduction. So we're going to go through um, the DPR timeline, the resources, the identification, uploading the GM link, preparing glass slides, shipping slides, and receiving slides back. I know this is a lot of information that we've gone over before, but we need to make sure that everyone's doing it correctly. Um, because it does affect the budget if things are done incorrectly. Okay, so the DPR timeline. So we're doing the trainings today and on the 12th, Thursday. And then starting the 12th, because once everybody has had their um, training, they can go ahead and start preparing to ship. And so um, they'll be, the first step of course is to upload the slides. And so as long as we, they pass the QC, then they can go ahead and ship on to the DPR. And we want them to ship between January 12th and April 15th, the sooner the better, because all slides need to be at the DPR by April 15th, and then that way all the slides can be scanned by June 30th. And also, so EM images should also be uploaded into GM link with the slides so that the participants pathology materials can be processed through the course scoring. Any questions on the timeline? So the resources. The materials associated with the kidney biopsy retrieval, the identification and shipping protocol. So the DCC did provide training materials, the barcoded labels, the cork line slide boxes for shipping to and from the scanning facility, the thin piece of padding for inside the glass container, it's very important when they put that thin padding in there and they've um, sealed up the box either by taping rubber banding. If they just give it just a slight shake, just to make sure they don't hear any slides moving around. If, they, if you hear slides moving around, then you need to put more padding in there because that's what helps it prevent them from um, knocking into each other or cracking during <laughs> shipment. And then we also give access to GM Link. And then the sites and the PCCs will provide all pathology material for enrolled participants, a thin wide Sharpie or thin width Sharpie or permanent marking pen for writing on the slide label. And then a wide label Sharpie if the identified in hard copy by path reports. And then a padded envelope for mailing. And we actually did send um, the padded envelopes for mailing as well. And if you guys, if anybody needs any more labels, please let us know as soon as possible so we can get those out to them. So some new resources that we have, we have a CureGN DPR manual of operations. So I've taken all the reference from, all, from the regular manual of operations, the um, the identification information as well as the GM link manual and just put everything regarding DPR in this one document so sites will have one place that they can reference they don't have to go looking at several different documents um, we also have appendices to that um, which is the research pathology request form if they need to request from outside their site the site level QC of pathology slides this document will help when sites are um, choosing which slides to send, which ones not to send. A site DPR checklist, as well as DPR shipping with FedEx. And this checklist is um, just a, a quick overview that the sites can use as they're doing each um, participant. They can mark off like, yes, they did this step, this step, and so on. And then we will have some training videos coming soon regarding de-identifying, shipping, and GM link. So what needs to be collected and QC'd? 
first of all, the pathology report to be identified and labeled with a biopsy ID and uploaded into LINK. EM images are also de-identified and labeled with the biopsy ID and uploaded to the link. And the glass slides are labeled with the study slide label. And um, in handwritten is the level and stain type. And then the glass slide tray image created um, where they copy the slides on a copier to upload to link. We do prefer that it's in color because it's a lot easier to see. Um, so, Please stress the importance of copying in color. And then the slide copy created and uploaded into GM Link. Great. And Melissa, just to, yes. to add, it's mm -hmm. part of what's easier to see are some of the, the problems that we're looking for. So it's not just like, oh, I can see the barcode easier. You know, it's um, you'll see it when Melissa shows some of the example slides that are good and bad is that, you know, being able to see the color helps us see if like a bubble is actually interfering with the tissue or not. Like sometimes that can be hard to tell on just the black and white, so yeah. Okay. Yep, exactly, thank you, Kylie. Okay, so de-identification. Identifiers that need to be removed are any hospital identifiers, um, the laboratory identifiers, any health providers, um, all dates need to be removed. Um, patient identifiers, biopsy identifiers, and then just any other information that's deemed identifiable. Now, a very important when it comes to patient identifiers for the date of birth, the date of birth must be removed, okay? But the age is required. So we, want, we don't want to see the date of the birth date, but we do want to see like 45 years old. May I add another um, uh -huh. easy rule? Any date that appears in the biopsy report, you don't need it. Any Correct. Date, we want to like remove it. The date of birth, the date the biopsy was done, the date the patient came in for a visit, any date, just delete it and you would not be wrong. And you Melissa. will not miss yep. anything that is important to delete. So oh, sorry, oh. Melissa. Yes. If the date or if the age is not in the report, are they supposed to calculate it and write it on the form? Well, I will, I'm going to actually pass this to you. Do you want them to calculate the date or the age if it's not in the report? Yeah, it's very unusual that usually oh, every report has a date of birth and the age. Um, I think it can be um, difficult because you calculate the age when, when you print out the report or when the biopsy was actually done. So that creates a lot of uh, potential mm, and data entry that are not correct, right? So if the biopsy was done two years ago and um, I have the date of birth, how old is the patient? Is is uh, 45 because today is 45? Or is 43 because at the time of the biopsy it was 43? So I would say no, don't do it. No, okay. Good question, Kristen. Thank you, Laura. I'm just making so a note of that. I just uploaded a report this morning, and I did leave the data biopsy. I thought we could leave the data biopsy. Because we so all in, the mop, in the MOP, I think is specified. So the data of the biopsy is actually an identifier. Oh, all right. So I got to redo mine. OK. Sorry, Suzanne. Um, no, that's okay. Mark, I don't know why I thought we could leave the, just the date that the biopsy was done. Yeah, any, <laughs> look, if you go with this rule, delete any date, which I think I put that somewhere in the map, um, you yeah. can't go wrong. And you don't yeah, even we do have, now to have it. it. You don't have to think about, do I have to leave it? No, it's a date, go. Get rid of it. Let me go right now and do it. Yep, and actually this slide, it came directly from the MOP, the updated MOP. So all dates is listed under there. So. Yep. 
biopsy. But exactly, that's a biopsy identifier day when biopsy was done, receive or sign out. But also maybe less stress any date. So for de-identifying the pathology report, the instructions are in the DPR MOP. Um, looking at the report or the listings for each of the sites, we only have one site that has a few um, pathology reports that need to be uploaded. So I wasn't going to focus on that since all the sites have been taken care of that. Um, we're definitely going to talk about the slide copy and how to place the DCC provided label over the original label and ensure that no PHI is visible, the level it and stain are written on the label. You also want to make sure that the label is not um, overlapping or hanging off of the slide or in the frosted area. And then um, make a copy of the slides to upload to GN Link. Color, again, color copies are preferred. And then slide copies must be in JPEG. Because those are uploaded into Halo Link. So this is rejecting and identifying information on the EM images. Um, again, this information is found in the MOP, but you want to open up the paint and then go into the EM image. And this will allow you to um, add a white section if there's not a white section on there. And it also allow you to use the different um, items so that you can delete or hide information. So they just want to um, review the image and identify within the image at the bottom of, the, or at the bottom of the image, the information recorded, then identify the information that qualified for the patient biopsy operators or institutional identifiers. So pretty much any of the identifiers that we showed on the previous slides want to be removed. Um, if they do have the print magnification, we want to keep that in there. And any of the measurements like that, like, um, just direct magnification, <laughs> HV, and then the microns. But we want to remove anything that has identifiers. So again, all the information regarding the patient, biopsy operators, and institution must be removed. And that includes the name of the patient, medical record number, date of birth, gender, race identification, biopsy specimen number, date and time of the biopsy or procedure, uh, pathologist or operator's name and initials, by identification by name, and just note that the scale and magnification, the information pertinent to the information needs to be kept. And then the biopsy number and the patient's name may appear superimposed in the image in some cases. Um, when this happens, um, you just need to be ma masked them using a 2D rectangle, even if this will cause masking of a small portion of the image. Okay. But that's the only time we want anything on the actual image itself. We want everything else to be in the bottom white section. Okay. Um, and if, and this goes for the pathology reports as well, if we see something like um, it looks like it might be in an initial, we will reach out to the site as we're doing the QC and to um, just to confirm if it's in um, initials or not. So selecting it and deleting the identifying information from the toolbar, you want to select the 2D shape. A variety of shapes will appear on the right side of the image, and you want to select the square. And then you hold the click key of the mouse and generate a rectangle on top of the information you want to mask. So you would hold it down and then drag it. And then click on solid fill at the top right. Of the if, if the text is still visible, and then repeat if necessary to cover another section of the image. So if there is um, several different places down here that there has identified information, you want to do different squares for it, okay? Because you want to make sure, again, that you keep like the magnification and things like that information. Relabeling. 
So you can locate the text tool at the top and you click on the tool and then move the mouse over the right lower right corner of the image, drag a rectangle by clicking on the mouse and enlarging the box. Once the box is drawn, you can release the mouse key and then type the following details. No, use always the underscore between information and do not use a dash. So biopsy ID um, would be um, like three, one, two, three, underscore, three, two, one. And then the type of image, which is an EM image, because we no longer do IF. And then the total number of images. Okay. So you would have one, two, three, underscore, three, two, one, underscore, EM, underscore, one, of four, or two, of four, three, of four, and so on. And like this one in the picture up here is one of 10. So. And then you would just save the image as a JPEG with a cure GM biopsy appended to the type of image. Again, the same thing that you're labeling on the actual image is what you want to file name it, okay? The biopsy ID underscore EM underscore pay, or image number of total images. So the pathology report will have the biopsy ID on every page as well as the page X of Y on every page where X is the page number and Y is the number of pages. Save the file as a PDF, and the naming convention will be biopsy ID underscore path underscore report. Slide copy is gonna be saved as a JPEG, and the naming convention for that is just biopsy ID underscore slide underscore copy. And then EM images, the biopsy ID and the X of Y of, on each image, where the X is the image number and Y is the number of images and then save the file as a JPEG, and then the naming convention would be the same as what you labeled it, biopsy ID underscore EM underscore X of Y. Any questions so far? So where to find the pathology, or the biopsy ID? This is actually the pathology report upload task. So the site, once they've entered the participant into link and they go into their ITAS, they can click on the pathology report upload task link. And this is what they'll see. And up here at the top left hand is where the biopsy ID is. Three, two, three dash, or three underscore two, four, four, four. Okay, so uploading to link. For central QC, so the QC for the de-identified glass slides, EM, and the pathology reports are closed virtually. The de-identified pathology report is uploaded into GMLink, as well as the EM images. And the glass slides are scanned, again, in color, preferably. Um, and then they want to um, upload those copies into GMLink. So this just shows an example. And this one is in color as well. Um, some of these labels are not on here, is not put on properly. You can see they're hanging over the edge um, or they're way down into the um, frosted area. So those are things that we look for when um, these are uploaded into Link. That's why we really prefer the color because the black and white is really hard to tell. So which glass slides do we want to ship? So we want the H&E, the PAS, the Trichrome, the Jones Silver, EM, and the H&E FS. We do not want any of the ones that have any of these additional things like IGA, IGG, IGM, 3C3, C1Q, Kappa, Lambda, Albumin, and Fibrogen. We do not want control tissues or any empty slides, okay? So I'm just gonna go through a few examples here. So these are kind of the things that you're looking for as you're going through the labels, or through the slides. So here's one here. Um, so the stain type, it does show trichrome, which was one of the ones we want, so that's good. Is it in good condition? No bubbles, cracks, dirt, excessive folding? It looks good. Um, and you can tell the stain, this um, like the whiter circle around it, that's from the stain. 
Um, so that's good to go. Um, send to the, oops, yes, we can send to the DPR, so it is labeled correctly. Um, no identifiers are visible, and they have the level, which is the A1, and the trichrome, which is the stain. So the next one, this one has an IF negative control. It's a control, we don't want it. You don't even have to go any further. You see the name control, we don't want it. Trigrome. So, Melissa? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I was going to add, oh, okay. I want to add one thing. I'm going to apply to this one. So, yeah. I'm sorry? But I was, Laura, I think we're both trying to talk, so you go ahead. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think a rule of thumb is like, um, if you can't see the tissue on the slide with your eye, the scanner's not going to see it. So, you know, if, so for like the, the IF negative control, we don't want it for a couple reasons. <laughs> but one of them is because it's control. Um, but one of them is also because you can't, you can't actually see anything on the slide. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. there we go. That's all I was going to say. That's what I want to say. So, perfect. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Great. Excellent. Okay. So this one has trichrome, which is something we want, but it's got the fibrogenin on it. So we do not want this one. So actually, I want to point out a few things here. There are a lot of problems with this slide. Number one, it's completely wrongly labeled. There is no such a thing as trichrome and fibrinogen. Those are mutually exclusive. Trichrome is a stain that you use on the paraffin um, fix, para, um, on the formalin fix paraffin embedded section for histology. Fibrinogen is a stain that you use on the frozen section. So the, 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 if you see something labeled like this, it's wrong to, believe, to begin with. Number two, you cannot see the tissue. So and, and if there is fibrinogen, most likely is a frozen section stained with antibodies against fibrinogen, which is not one of the things that we scan because we can't see it. Number three, there are also bubbles. Yeah. Right Yes, Chris, I saw in, your, in the chat you put in, uh, we do not want the biopsy on the slide label. The only thing that should be on the slide label is, um, besides the barcode itself, is the stain and the level. Nothing else should be added on there. Another thing, too, is if you've got a lot of this writing on it, like these circles, we don't want that either. Um, if it's possible that you can remove them, that would be great. So here we have an EM, and then it's an A2, so it's got the level on it, which is great. And an EM image is, you see how it's got the, um, the smaller square in here that's on top of all the little um, samples? Or, yeah. That's, that's one thing you can see about an EM image. That is what we want, um, to have that little, little, little square on top of it. Okay. We definitely want that one. This one, PAS, we want that too. And again, you can see how it's got like around the edge, it looks like it might have some little bubbles just around the edge, but it's not on um, actual um, specimen, so we're good there. How about the lack of um, level? Oh, yep, you're right. We don't have a level on that one, so we don't. We wouldn't want to ship this one we, we want until to, we have well, a level. We may not have so this. We may not be able to retrieve the level in some cases. Okay. So we don't want to make it up if we don't have it. But just keep that in mind that if you don't have a level mark, check again. Maybe you can find it. And if you can't find it, you can find it. But 
we still want this slide if it's a good slide. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. We do still want this the slide. Right. Okay, good. But, but but the 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 thing is, if you don't have a level mark, go back and check again. Okay, that is a good tip. Thank you. <coughs> so we have Joan Silver, and it's got the level on it, and this is one of the ones that we do want. So that's a good one to go. This one, Joan Silver, we wanted. It doesn't have the level, but that's okay. But we still don't want this one because of this humongous crack in it. And the bubble. And the bubbles, yes. Because that bubble right there is right over the specimen. So we definitely don't want that one. And then we've got another one that's got albumin and then trichrome, which we don't want because, as Laura stated earlier, um, that's not correct. It doesn't make any sense. And yep. let's say that it was only marked as albumin, is you still don't want it because that right. is a frozen section stain with antibodies against albumin you don't see the the tissue and you will never see the tissue because it's not stained but one of the stains that we see so that goes we don't want that and the last one here h and e what we want got the level a5 and again you can see this uh, specimen in there and so we're good to go Okay. Any questions on the type of sample of slides that we want sent in? So we're going to go ahead and do a demonstration because I just feel it's easier to do it in link instead of give you slides. <laughs> I'm going to put in my name key. Oh, that one didn't work. Melissa. Yep, go ahead. Melissa, while you're doing that, um, and I, I can't remember if you said this already or you're going to say it, but for example, that one where we didn't have a level, you know, if you, uh, if you're like, oh, I don't have a level, and you do as Laura said, and like, okay, I'll double check, see if I can figure it out, and you're still just like, yeah, there's no level. That is something that you could write on the slide copy upload. Remember, Melissa, how you said like yep. that they can mm -hmm. note on their weird things. Like that would be a fine thing to be like level and available or something. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. There definitely. is also an option. There is also an option in link when you assign the barcode of unknown. So that also works. Yep. Yeah, and actually, on the thank you for reminding me of that too, Colleen. On the actual slide upload, the copy that you make. If you guys see something, like you see a bubble, you see a crack and you're like, well, I don't know if we can send it because it's like a small crack. It's, you know, make note of it because um, yes, on a color one, we more than likely will see it, but just in case, and you have the actual slide right there, just make a note on that copy, not over the slide, but like underneath it or just to the side of it, just say, hey, this has got a little crack. Is it okay to send? Um, because it really helps us when we're doing the QC. Let's go to link. Okay. Okay. So to upload so the pathology report. Okay. So this one, it has the pathology report upload started. And that just means that they went into it. So we'll go ahead and upload a file. Add files, documents, and there's the path report. And then you click upload. And once that's uploaded, you close this, and it'll show here. Now, I did not change the um, biopsy ID. I should have I should have renamed it three underscore eleven ninety four. So please disregard that. Okay. So now we have the path report in. We want to go to continue, or you can click on to the next page. And yes, this questionnaire is complete. Once you do that, it goes to the QC process. Okay. And then Jessica looks at it, makes sure everything's good, and then she'll pass QC. 
And then you'll want to go on to the next, which is the pathology slide collection and the EM image upload. So we'll go ahead and do the EM image upload first. Very similar to what we just did for the pathology report. Where image is obtained, we say yes. Go to the upload file, add files, and then do a search. And then you can actually click on all of these open and it uploads down there and then we can just do the upload all again I didn't change the um, biopsy ID okay so we have those all listed on here okay and they're not in order but if you want to go ahead and click file name so put them in order and that way you can look to see if you missed any okay. and again we go to continue Questionnaire is complete. Continue. Takes us back to the eye task. So pathology slide collection. Click on that. Okay. And again, we see the biopsy ID. And with bio pathology materials obtained, yes. The biopsy date, we'll just stick it here. And then we need a barcode which is always going to start with 11. And then one, two, three. And you want to do the first one, the first label, and the last label. Okay. And then hit generate barcodes. And you wait for so, it. So here, Here's where I'm going to make a plug that because you're only entering the first barcode and the last barcode, the labels must be continuous. Um, so if you find, you know, if you link 12 barcodes and you end up, I don't know, having to throw one away, that's fine. There's a label discarded right there. Like, don't, you know, that's one of your choices under the collection status. Like, don't try to. You can't you can't have it skip it skip a number um if there is a situation that comes up rarely but once in a while where you have to link barcode send the material to the enrolling pathologist and then before it goes to dpr you find more bar more slides contact melissa because on the back end we can make it where you can have multiple sets of barcodes, but in the system, there's no way for you to do that, so. Right. Okay, right, exactly, Kelly, thank you. Okay, so once you have the barcodes in there and you generate, you have the list here, okay? And it shows you each barcode and that's why it has to be continuous, okay? And then um, you'll mark whether they were collected which they should all be collected, so we can do that. And then it's gonna tell you you need to add the stain type, okay? So let's just go ahead and do some different slides here. Okay, I probably shouldn't have so many labels. Okay, and then oops, you only have to do the other stain if you select on here um, and the other specify, which we're not going to do that. Um, and then here's where you can put the level in, okay? So if you want to do like A1, A2, oh, A1 again, A3, okay, oops. Are they always an A, Laura? The level. Sorry, what's your question again? Is the level always start with an A? Most of the time. Most of the time. Okay. And so on, you could do that all the way. And so, yeah, if you weren't able to find the, the level, then you would just put a note in here. Okay. And then you would want to continue completing them all. But, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and hit continue once we have all that information in. Okay, and then you do biosample collection complete. 
Now, you want to upload to link the slide copy. So you do have to mark this biosample collection complete, okay? And once we do that and hit continue, when we go back in, we now have the pathology or the CureGen slide copy upload, okay? So you actually have to um, complete the uh, slide collection Sierra first. And then we can go into the slide copy upload. Slides are retained. And again, same way to upload as you did with the EM in the pathology report. Add files. Um, the slide copy there. Upload. And you would make sure that it has the right pathology name or um, biopsy ID. Sorry. Okay. So we then hit continue and yes. Okay. And then it has to go through QC process. And then once Jessica lets you know that, yep, your slides were good, you can go ahead and send them. You would go back into the uh, pathology slide collection CRS. Okay. If, say, for some reason she says, okay, yep, you can send them all, but we don't want you to send 3764, okay? You can come in here and mark it as not collected, and it's still continuous, okay? Because you have to put this information in first, you're going to have that barcode in there. And instead of, like, trying to tear the barcode off and put it in, you know, on a different slide, you can just mark it as not collected, okay? So mark it as complete again. And then you would send it to shipping, okay? Um, you are not able to send to shipping until it passes QC. So let me go in. I actually have one that I know past QC. So as we can see, if we go in here to the pathology slide collection, and we go to the second page, and now we can send the shipping because it's gone through QC, okay? And now, if for any reason, like when you're going to ship, and you realize there's something wrong with one of the barcodes, you know, like you missed the barcode up somehow, you can always come in and unlink the barcodes just like you do with the biosamples, okay? Okay, so we've gone through how to upload everything into the link. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about preparing the glass slides. Any questions so far? So preparing the slides for shipping. So we, you have to use the manifest. Um, you can use either the PDF or the CSV version. You want to place the slides in the cork line slide boxes in the order that they're listed on the manifest. So they need to be in sequential order. And then you want to please, place please, please. Yes. <laughs> our, our scanning facility um, does not like it when the slides are in the box, you know, like in the, the cork line box in a different order than what they are in the manifest. Um, Could they then have to manually put them in the order? And anything they have to do manually that slows them down ends up costing, uh, costing NIDDK money, which means there's fewer dollars for actually scanning more slides. You know what I mean? So that's why some of this seems like we're being very uh, dogmatic. But it's really just to help MHL do things as smooth as possible um, so that we can scan even more slow. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, then place a layer of the padding on top of the slides and close the box and just do a light shake. We don't want to do it hard, but just a light, light shake. And then um, you just want to make sure you don't hear any slide movement and you want to add additional padding if it's necessary. And then I always suggest that you place a rubber band around the box, both vertically and horizontally, just to make sure that the box does not open during shipment. And if you're using more than one box, indicate on the boxes the order they should be opened according to the manifest. Again, you've already put 
all the slides in in the order they are in the manifest. So the very first box should be one of say one of three, and then the next one would be two of three, and then three of three. That way they know which order to open them so that they match the manifest. Again, very important on their end. Um, and then you place the box the boxes in the padded FedEx envelope along with a copy of the manifest. Now you can either print the PDF manifest or the CSV version. And I'll show you how to do those in a minute. And then, but don't close the envelope yet. Okay. So we're, the slides are prepared and ready to ship. So now we want to, um, you can create the shipping label with FedEx and you want to use the Appendix D from the DPR map. And you're going to create a shipping label and a return label. You'll want to place the return label in the padded envelope with the slides and manifest and then place the shipping label in a plastic sleeve and attach it to the outside of the envelope. Now that you've got the labels, the manifest, and the return label in the envelope, you can seal it up and then schedule a pickup or drop off, depending on what your um, institution requires you to do for FedEx. Okay. I'm gonna go back to link, okay? And we're going to go to facilities task. So now we're going to talk about shipping. Okay. You want to go to the shipping scanning facility and then click on the shipping manifest and it shows it's not started. Okay. And it's got all of these. Okay. And this one's not going to let me. So let's try a different purse. Oh no. No, no, take a different. Okay. Not sure why it's not letting me mark these as shipped, but you would mark them all as shipped. Let me go back to here. Okay. And I'm in the test site, so let me go into actual GM link and see if I can. Okay. Okay, we do have a test site in here. I don't want that one out. Don't need the name key. So facility pass. See if we got that up here. We do have a shipping manifest that was started. Okay. That's good. And this one's not going to let me click it either. Okay, so I have to figure out why it's not letting me click, but a couple of things. You're going to see the DPR um, at MHL, their address up here to confirm that you are shipping to the right site. Okay, and then you would mark every one that you're going to ship. Okay, this one's only got three back over here. So yeah, you would mark all of them shipped. You can always mark click the button shift to get them all marked. And then you would put your carrier in. And then the tracking number. And then the date of the shipment. And continue. Um, so it will show up here, same as it does with the bio samples. It's gonna show you how many types, how many of each type of slide that you have in the box. So you want to just count that, make sure, or add that up to see how many there are. Look at the box, make sure you have the right number in there. Okay. And then you would send to shipping, and that just kind of creates the manifest, which is telling you here that no samples have been selected. And then you want to email the manifest. Now, there's the CSV file. You can see it here in the attachment. This one's going to be empty because we weren't able to select anything. In the top two box, I'm gonna get to myself so I can send. And again, please, please, please don't forget this step because this yeah. is another one uh, that MHL really needs. And in this case, they actually take uh, the CSV that you send and it goes through a processing step 
and is used kind of further downstream for when we upload the images into Halo Link. Uh, this CSV file kind of makes that transition and is part of that process. So again, it's very important that they have it so that they can uh, do all of their steps and, and ultimately get the images in the Halo Link. And so in the manual, it does tell you who needs to be in the Q address just for you to confirm it to make sure their names are in there. And it's the MHL staff. And then in the CC line, if you're not listed, you can go ahead and put your email in there. That way you'll get a copy of it. It's always a good thing to do. That way you have it if they come back and say, oh, we didn't send this. And you can say, yeah, you did. Here's the email. I've done that before <laughs> for bio samples. So um, it's just a good safety net for yourself. And so we hit send. And that's been sent, okay? And so let me boot up. It's gonna take a second for that to come up, but that's fine. Let's go back, oops, okay. Here is, so you can either do the PDF. Here's the email. And it just shows that, you know, we can complete the shipping manifest. We open the manifest and they are on here. Okay, again, this is a test site, so sometimes it's a little wonky. So, <laughs> okay. so you can print this out if you want to do all these steps before you seal the envelope and print this out and put that in as a manifest, or you can do the PDF. Okay, but you have, this has to be emailed. So as long as you follow the steps and link that we showed doing all of these, you're gonna be able, it's gonna ship and you don't have, or email and you won't have to worry about it. Um, to, to print a PDF of this, you would click this print here and then you can print all pages, so it'd be both pages. Um, and then it just comes up and then it, this is what it looks like. Um, definitely different than the CSV file, so. But it does have all the same information and in the same order as far as the labels are concerned. Okay. So those are your options there for the CSV file. And that's why I said send it to yourself, that way you will get that CSV file, okay? Any questions about link so far? So now we need to receive the slides back. So when you receive your slides back, you need to go into GN Link and mark the slides as returned and what condition they were in, okay? So let's go back here. And it's, let me see if I can get a return one here. Not, um, Vita, I see that you're on. Would you mind if I used your site? Because I think you had some returned. Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember this, but of course, go ahead. If you're okay with me opening it, I, it's, I don't have the name key, so yeah, you're sure. not going to see anything. Okay, thank you. Because um, I just want to show you guys what it looks like. So here it is, receiving facility, facility receipt manifest. So if you, that's what you want to click on when you get them back. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark these all as received back. Now you wanna make sure that how to do that is to mark them either as received and packed. If there was one missing, you didn't get it back, you wanna mark that. Or if any of them are broken, you wanna mark that, okay? Very important that you do that for all of these. So you would do that and then go to the second page and it's not gonna let me because it's saying this is required. But you can go in and mark it as completed. And that's all you have to do to check them in. It's just that easy, okay? Let's go to the receiving facility. Okay. All right, I know we've gone through quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> um, any questions before we go over to just the next steps? Melissa, I think there was a question in the chat. Oh, sorry, that was just to me. Never mind. But I'm going to ask because I don't know. Krista's wondering. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Krista. I have to call you out. Do we ship in? Oh, do we have to ship in padded envelopes, or can we use boxes? 
Um, oh man. So, well, yeah. <laughs> if you use a box, that's fine. Just make sure there's enough padding in there that those are, that the um, boxes inside are not moving around. Okay. Um, now FedEx, I'm going to, for CureGN, for FedEx, if we don't use those shippers, then we're not going to get any more. So um, <laughs> the padded envelopes that they sent us. So, and those are nice, the padded envelopes, because they can be used twice. So you can use it to ship to them, then they can turn around and use the same envelope mm. to ship back to you. Um, but I know there's nice. only like, there's, a, I can't remember if it's three or four boxes will fit into those. So depending on, if you have tons of boxes, then yeah, you might want to do something. A, a regular box to strip them in. Just make sure there's enough bubble wrap, padding, everything, so that those boxes do not move around. Thank you. Because yep. if you have, as long as you have enough padding in the envelope or in the box, the individual cork boxes, so the sides don't move around, and you have that box padded really well, I can tell you from experience, if you drop it, they're not going to break. <laughs> And don't ask me why I said that. <laughs> why I have that experience, but um, <laughs> just a little birdie told you that they won't break if that happens. <laughs> yeah. So enough padding in there, and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Next step. So um, I did resend some of the listings that had corrections on them, and I will go ahead and send everybody their listings again, just so that you have the final current um, listing of what needs to be shipped. So we are going to be training MHL, the DPR, on Thursday. So it looks like you're going to be able to start shipping after they pass your um, slides past the normal QC process. So you can go ahead once you're done with the training today. Any coordinators are on, if you want to go ahead and start making your copies and uploading them, you can do that. And then we are planning on having a call with the sites every two weeks just to kind of get updates on how the shipping is going, answer any questions anyone has, um, sharing any information um, like a, what's working, what's not working for your site. It's a good time for the sites to like ask each other like, hey, we're not having problems with this. How did you get this? Um, we haven't set up a time for that, but I will start sending, I will send out a poll to set those up. I'm also looking at doing maybe office hours every Thursday at 11 a.m. That's the only time I really have like free on a constant basis. Um, would you prefer that or would you prefer to just set up a call when you're ready to ship? If we do want to do a, a quick virtual call so that um, we can just do a quick check of your cork line boxes, making sure everything's good. Um, this was a request that was done. And so we're um, looking at doing that. Again, I'll put out a, uh, I'll either send you an email or I'll send out a poll to find out which works best for you. And then finally, would it be helpful to have Laura Berriosoni talk to your pathology department um, when you're having issues getting your slides? But yes, Suzanne, I will make sure to um, include you guys on the site correspondence. Um, yes, um, if uh, <clears throat> you have problem with the pathology department, let me know. I, I was successful in the past to reach out to some of the, of the pathologies. They feel more confident that things will be taken care of the way they want if they talk to another pathologist, the usual thing. So I'm available and um, let, just let me know. Okay, I see Natalia on the call. Natalia, can you let me know what site you're from? She's from Poland, from Warsaw. She's our website. Um, it's oh, okay. It's our subsite, yeah. Yeah. So you actually don't need to be do the training because since your site is not one of them that's going to be shipping, we're just starting with the five sites. But that's okay. All right. So yeah, so hopefully, um, again, I'm not seeing the coordinators on this call, so please reach out to your coordinators and let them know 
um, that they do need to be on the training on Thursday in order to ship. So we need to make sure that they're on that call, okay? Like I said, I've had a few that have um, accepted, so um, definitely expect to see them there, but just remind your sites if you talk to them, okay? All right, and if you have any questions or need help, send an email to qgm-projectmanagement at umich.edu. Um, you'll be getting an email about that too. Let you know. Um, okay. Any questions? Melissa, can you just let us know who did respond that they'll be on the call on Thursday? Yeah, let me pull that up here real quick. Thursday, Thursday. So I have. We've got outside of the um, leads, Francesca from Gaslini, Amanda from Texas Tech, Leslie from WashU, and Aria from Midwest. Sorry, from Nationwide. So actually, um, the only one that hasn't is Gabrielle. She is attending. Nobody from Michigan responded, oh. right? Yeah, no, she's right. She's the only one that needs to, that's the only site that hasn't responded, so. Okay. We'll get on her. Was Stefan Toon from NCH invited? So, because Aria is a lead coordinator with our PCC, she is not a site coordinator, so she will not be the one. She's, I mean, she's managing the DPR project for us at, on a on a PCC level, but she is not yeah. the individual site coordinator. Yeah. So I sent it originally just to the to the five people, the five coordinators, like that I knew from each site, um, and then I had expressed that it, you can forward it to anybody else at your site that would want that would need to be on it. So um, if you want to just have, if you or Aria, whoever, can go ahead and forward that invitation to anybody at your site that would be working on the DPR. Yeah, feel free to forward it to anybody at those five sites that would um, be interested in attending the training. Uh, here's Natalia from Poland. I just uh, had some issues with the microphone, so I'm here only for the short reminder for the DPR uh, uh, requirements. So I uh, I just want to um, keep up. So I have no issues with with the DPR, and we send already all the one zero participants. So okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I mean, I think the big takeaways are we need to make sure that the instructions are followed to the T um, so that when it goes to the repository, they don't have any issues and we'll be able to send more slides. Um, and just follow like the checklist to say like what type of slides need to be shipped, making sure that you're de-identifying things correctly. Oh, and you know what, since we have time, let me. So the appendices to the MOP are, we have a nice flow chart that Colleen did. It's just a pathology flow chart. And there's two pages to it. Just, it's a nice reference so sites understand like what, how everything goes to the processes. We have the pathology um, request form that you fill out to send to um, any pathologists to get your um, slides. We have the QC level. So this is something that's a little bit new, but just kind of when you're going through the slides, what you're looking for, what don't you want? And then this has the table that we showed in the slides. Um, this shows the type of slides that we want, as well as some examples. Okay. And then we have the shipping with the FedEx 
which this is, um, we had this before, so that shouldn't be new to anybody. And then this is a new BPR checklist. This is the one I said um, sites can print out. Um, they can put the study ID, biopsy ID, or both, whichever. And this is just for their own records. So once they gather the materials, and then it shows you what page in the map to go to if you have questions. Okay, and then like as you de-identify, you have to report and make sure everything's done correctly. Same with EM images, the last slides. And then once that's done, they can check that off and then upload pathology materials to link. Again, the class slides have a little bit more information. I got to change that. It's not PDF, it's actually JPEG. And then prepare the class slides to ship. And then shipping them in link as well as shipping them to the DPR through FedEx. And then they would, when they got the slides back, they would go ahead and receive them back. So, um, yeah, this is just a nice little way for them to keep track of what they're doing for each participant to make sure that they followed everything, got everything correctly, and where to look if they have questions. Okay, so these will, I'm, Thursday after the training is when I'll post these to Basecamp so that sites can have them. Um, and I actually have the map that has like everything in it, including the appendices. So. But we'll, we'll put all that on link that way the site um, can access it because uh, it can be a, too big of a file to ship to email. So I'll post it. Okay. All right. Any questions? Okay. Well, if not, then we will let go of 25 minutes early. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, thanks, Melissa. For, oh, thanks for everybody for attending. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. Bye.